Okay, it's a special from the Anfield Wrap, and I'm joined by Matt Ashton, who's the Director of Public Health in Liverpool. Uh, as you may well know by now, Liverpool is going to be the subject of mass COVID-19 testing from this weekend. Um, and we've got Matt on just to have a chat about it and to encourage people to get along, because Matt, I think first and foremost, we've got to say that this is a real opportunity for Liverpool, isn't it? Oh, this is a fantastic opportunity. It's it's really exciting, actually, because we've got an opportunity to to shape our destiny here, shape our destiny out of this national lockdown, shape how we emerge from that situation, uh, shape what the levels of infections look like in the city as we come out towards Christmas and into the new year. So this this is an amazing opportunity if we get this right. Yeah, and it's listen, it's been horrible for everyone, hasn't it? It's changed changed everyone's lives and it's really understandable if people are, you know, sick and tired of it really and a bit weary of the whole thing. But with this, I, I feel as though, you know, I see sort of people being suspicious about it, people floating, you know, different theories about it and all the rest of it. I think it's important to say that the want for this and the need for this has come from people in Liverpool. It's not the other way around. It's not the government dictating to us, is it? It's people, leaders in Liverpool, yourself included, who've said, we want this in Liverpool. Absolutely. This has come from us. It's come from us as a city. It's come from myself. It's come from the mayor. It's come from the leaders in the city and in the city region. So uh, the background to this is during the summer, we had an, an outbreak in Prince's Park, which some people might be aware of. And, and, it, and it, cases shot up quite rapidly. And we took a, a really proactive approach to this by putting additional testing in right at the heart of our community. And we, we got our community to get tested. We used our community leaders, our community champions to push people through those testing sites. And as a result of that, we controlled that outbreak in under three weeks. In around two and a half weeks, we went from a situation where cases were increasing rapidly into having dampened it right the way down. It was a massive success. And we got lots of plaudits locally, but, but, in, but nationally and internationally on it. It went really well. And that demonstrated to us, it, it, it confirmed for us that we have the power locally to control this. We can let other people do things to us. We can let people tell us what we should and shouldn't be doing, or we can take charge of this. And, and so that's absolutely been our approach right the way through this pandemic. The, do you know, you said didn't you? This has been horrible. It's not been a good year. It's it's not been a good year. So many people have lost their lives through coronavirus this year. So many people have suffered as a result of COVID-19, but also so many people have suffered as a result of the lockdown, the impact on the economy, the impact on their jobs, impact on mental health and well-being, impact on them not being able to get their routine health services because the health services have been so busy with COVID. This has literally impacted on all of our lives all year, and it's been horrible. And uh, believe me, me more than anybody else wishes this bullshit virus would just disappear off. But, but unfortunately, it hasn't, and it's not going to, not right now. So the more we can do to control this, the better. So where this has come from is we we asked, we asked, yeah. can we try something? Can we do something in Liverpool? What can we do? Can we test out new new tests? Can we test out new strategies so that we can keep our city safe and we can keep our, our, our citizens, our residents safe. And not only that, Matt, this is a, a, an opportunity, isn't it, to, to do a small thing, go and get a test, where you can be helping the city as a whole, the businesses in Liverpool. Even, you know, it, it's a football city. We're a football podcast and a media outlet, if you like. We'd all love and we all miss going to the match. It's, all, it's a big part of my life. It's a big part of everyone's life at the Amphi Rap. The, the way to get back to that, is is through things like this, isn't it? This is the chink of light. This is the way out. And, you know, the alternative doesn't really bear thinking about if we emerge the other side of this national lockdown and we're, we're again put back in tier three, well, we can sort of forget about anything approaching a normal Christmas. We can forget about sort of seeing friends, friends and family at will like we, we normally would. Whereas alternatively, if everyone gets on board with this and gets on board with it quickly, it could really impact on our lives in a short space of time, couldn't it? You're, you're absolutely spot on. So, look, I, I've been a, a season ticket for 37, 38 years. Uh, I, I went and saw some amazing football, you know, when I first started. And obviously, we've had a bit, a bit of a dip. And then we're doing amazing football again. I can't wait to get back inside of Anfield. And I can't wait to see the lads playing incredible football and knocking it out of the park. And you're absolutely right. This is one of the ways that, that allows us to do this. So... This is about 
trying to identify everybody in the city who's got the virus and cutting those chains of transmission, but doing it in a really short period of time. So currently, if you've got symptoms, you're asked to go and get tested and you get your results. And if you're positive, you're asked to self-isolate for 10 days. The trouble is, we know there's lots of people who've got the virus, but don't know they've got it. They haven't got the usual symptoms. They haven't got the, you know, the fever, the cough, the loss of sense of taste or smell. They've got it, the virus, but they don't know they have. And what that means is they are spreading the virus through that city. It's not their fault. They don't know they've got it, but that is exactly what's happening. So by doing this, we can track where the virus is. We can help people to understand whether they're positive or negative. And if they're positive, then they self-isolate. And then they're done. You know, they're done then. They can get on with their lives. We cut, we break those chains of transmission. But the flip side of this, and this is the point you're getting to, if you test negative, if we know by using this technology, by repeat testing, that somebody is, is test negative, then the opportunities for them are potentially brilliant. If we get the policy changes behind this, and obviously we have to do the pilot and we have to work with government to do it, but if you get the policy changes behind this, that could allow us to go out for dinner, go to the pub with our mates, or go and watch our team play football. And I know I, that's where I want to be, and I'm sure loads of other people want to be there as well. What, what's, the, what's the process then, Matt? How is it going to work in terms of where people go, when they can go there, and all that kind of stuff? So we've got the testing launching at the end of this week. Uh, Friday's when it go, goes live. We've got loads of testing capacity, and we're working through really, really fast at pace now to work out exactly where all that capacity is going. But in general, there's going to be around 30, 35 of these what's called mobile testing units spread across the city, and they do the traditional PCR test, and that's where you get a, a swab, in the back of your throat, on your tonsils and up your nose, and it goes into a test tube and it gets posted off to a laboratory and analyzed and you get your result back in two or three days. So we'll have, we, and we do that already. We do that in the city, but that's mainly for people who've got symptoms. So we're gonna do a lot more of that. And it's not just if you've got symptoms, it's open to absolutely everybody. But on top of that, and this is the really exciting stuff, we've got new testing technology. It's called lateral flow technology. Um, and that is where you get the same swab back of your throat, up your nose, but it gets put into a liquid and gets analyzed in effect there and then. So people get their results in under an hour. They do the test, they leave the site, but then they will get a message through on their phone or by email or both that will say uh, you're positive or negative. So that gets you your results through a lot quicker. So that's really exciting as well. We we are putting those sites into place. There's you know probably going to be around 80 sites across the whole city. The plan is everybody is no more than one mile away. Uh, we might not get that spot on, but in effect, everywhere they are within one mile of a, of a testing center, and people are able to go online and book or phone a phone number and book, and actually also just turn up and get tested. We'll do all the, the, the details and the comms that's coming out at the end of this week. So really having loads of testing capacity in the city and making it as easy as possible for everybody to access. And it'll be, as you say, it'll be North Liverpool, it'll be South Liverpool, it'll be the center of Liverpool. Right the way across, right the way across. And it's for everybody. So, you know, my ask is everybody take advantage of that. Go and get yourselves tested. It's actually repeat testing. So it's not just get tested once. Ask you to get tested a couple of times over the next two to three weeks. And that way we know for certain that the, that you haven't got the virus and that it's not spreading around. Um, and it, it will be, it will, um, it will help us as we come out of this national lockdown, because although we will see rates of the virus increase at the start, uh, they will drop massively straight away. So because we'll get it, we'll get all the virus detected quite early on, then it'll come back down. And if we get this right, and if everybody gets behind this, we've got a really good chance of coming out of lockdown, not with the enhanced restrictions that we had when we went, when we when we've entered this national lockdown. And, and there, is, there is, as ever, Matt, with with everything, there, there is some negativity around it, unfortunately. And I know this is a uh, you know, a, a subject of frustration for you as well. But I, I would like to see people, and I'm sure you would, as we said at the top, to sort of see this as an opportunity, see this as a good thing. I mean, you know, my family, for, ex for example, live in Nosley, so they haven't got this opportunity, but I live in Liverpool, so I have. And, you know, they're rightly saying at this moment in time, well, why not Nosley as well? And I'm like, I know, but 
if it goes well in Liverpool, it works for Liverpool. You can imagine that it it would spread out to neighbouring borders eventually. That, that's exactly right. So so this is open to anybody who lives or indeed works in Liverpool. But if we get it right, we want to roll it out to the whole of the city region because much as I love Liverpool, we we all move about, don't we? We yeah. go you know we go out for nights out in different places. Some of us work and live in different places. We go visiting. So this isn't just about Liverpool. It's about the city region. Um, and 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 I also think you're right. Um, <laughs> lots of places up and down the country are jealous of us for having yeah. this opportunity. You know, we, no one else is doing this. Now, Liverpool has always led the way on public health. We had the first uh, um, medical officer of health, Dr. Duncan, now a fantastic pub in, in, in the town, in the city centre, sorry. And, and we've also, we did mass screening for tuberculosis back in 1959, I think. Um, we were the first city to become a, a no smoking city. We've always led the way on public health because we believe passionately that we look after each other and look out for each other. And that's exactly what this is. This is about us looking after the city and looking after each other. And, and it is a fantastic opportunity. But, but you know what, Pete? It's not mandatory, this. People mm. don't have to get tested if they don't want to. There's no. This is not a top-down approach. It's, there's no conspiracy theory here. We have asked for this. No one's told us to do it. We specifically asked for... Uh, military logistics support our fantastic friends in the military who are who have come to the city around you know 2000 2500 uh, of the army are helping on this and they're going to help do the tests and that you know it can sound scary can't it you know the mm. army are coming to the city but it but it's not like that they are helping us do the things they they do brilliantly which is the planning the logistics the delivery of the of the tests so we're using all the resources we've got to to absolute best effect i think th the other thing that's in my head and you know you, you get the you know oh the tests are rubbish or or covid's not real anyway and it doesn't really matter it doesn't make a difference or you know this is a grand conspiracy to capture everybody's details and put them into a massive database i mean if you think about some of the things that happen naturally they can't even run an excel sh spreadsheet so i wouldn't be getting too worried about that the, this <laughs> this is about us understanding where the virus is in the city and then looking after people, making sure they're okay. You know, if somebody's positive, there's packages of support for people to help them self-isolate. And if everybody gets tested, if we identify all the virus, then we are going to be turbocharged when we come out of this towards Christmas. And, and that's that's one of the things that's going to get you on, Matt, the, the, the other, and another sort of alternative view that is kicking around is, oh, well, if we all go and get a test, then, the, the, you know, the infection rate, published infection rate will go even higher for Liverpool. And then we're going to end up subject to even, you know, a, 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 an even more stringent lockdown. I, I keep seeing that all the time on social media as well. But, you know, you, you've got you've got to you've got to think about in two weeks, though, haven't you? Or three weeks or four weeks when if all of those people go and self-isolate and are not spreading all of a sudden, well, that rate will, will start to come down, won't it? That's that's exactly it. And it may be a surprise for people to know that we have thought about this. You know, we've thought <laughs> that, you know, we're going to go from two, around 2,000 cases a week and slightly more than that, uh, potentially potentially up to, you know, 15, 20,000 cases a week. That's a big jump. And so our graph will inevitably go up, but it will come down very quickly down the other side. And by the way, in our conversations with government, we've said our infection rates will go up and you cannot hold that against us. It's not allowed that you hold that against us because that's the point of the exercise. So yeah, people don't need to worry about that. And the other thing as well, Matt, you know, obviously it's a really serious situation, but I think people do need to carefully consider the effect on Liverpool of all this, you know, it's a it's a city that is, you know, awfully reliant on on the service industry, and that's taken a massive hit through all of this, and continues to do so. You know, again, by doing your bit and going and getting the test, you 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 are potentially helping these businesses survive. That's absolutely right. So we, look, we know the impact that our hospitals are having right now. We know our hospitals are fit to bursting with people who have got COVID. So that's a really important issue, isn't it? Keeping people safe. But if people don't understand that part of it, the other part is, how do we get back to living our lives as, as normally as possible? How do we get back to, to doing the things uh, like going in the pub with our mates or, or going out for a bit of dinner with the missus or, or whatever it is that you, that you do in your social life that we hang on to? And we, we simply can't do that if there's loads of virus around in the city. And we might not like that, but it, it, is, it is a fact that whilst levels of the virus remain high in the city, the government will not allow us to do certain things. So the way you 
you tackle that is by lowering the amount of virus there is in the city. And this is this is one of the best ways we can do. And, you know, doing it at the same time as a national lockdown. So we're all going to have a month's worth of pain now. We're all going to be yeah. stuck indoors much more than we'd like to be. But actually then, in terms of this public health intervention what better time to do it almost so we're not only are we in a national lockdown we get ourselves tested we understand where the virus is and then at the, on the other side of this if we get it right if everybody plays their part then the, we can hopefully get the pubs back open again we can get the restaurants open we will just get a bit more just life can return a little bit more to normal and i know i'm crying out for that so i'm sure lots of other people will do as well and just last of all, mate, to bring it back to uh, the football and, you know, was, was one day wanting to get back to some kind of normality around that, you know, get back in our seats in the cop and all the rest of it. Uh, but not just that as well, you know, the local football. I mean, you know, there are a couple of sides there that are, have got through to the FA Cup first round, but we're not going to be able to go and watch them. You know, grassroots football's being put on hold uh, with, with this latest lockdown and things like that. I, I think I see people as well sort of saying, well, how come, you know, Germany or how come Denmark can have some people in the grounds? But, you know, I've looked into that myself for, for stuff we've been, we've been doing on the Anfield app. And for instance, I know that in Germany, in, in regions of Germany, they've allowed some fans back in, but they, they're saying they're allowing them in when the infection rate is 35 per 100,000. Yeah. And we're, we're way, way, way above that, aren't we? 10 times that yeah. our infection rate is 10 times that our rate at the moment is this is in liverpool it's it's around 330 335 per 100,000 and it and it's higher in in other parts of the city region so that that just isn't on the table right now unless we can do something about it but i, I also do think as as you said before um having those really rapid tests and testing out those rapid tests potentially does give us the opportunity to get back into the game or get back into the ground sorry or or back playing elsewhere um and it and it's really it's quite uh interesting and exciting to explore this then isn't it um what could this mean i, I think we are going to be living with COVID for some time. That's the reality. I don't want us to be, but but we are. It's not going to just suddenly disappear. It's shown no sign of doing that so far. So unless or until we get to a vaccine position, we've got to change our lives to, to, to unfortunately live with it. But if we had a testing strategy that allowed us to live our lives and go to football or play football with our with our mates because we we get tested and we know where the virus is, then then fantastic. Okay, last of all, Matt, where, where do people go when they, to find out more information if they've watched this and they now, you know, they're now persuaded to go and get a test? What can they go and do next? So there's loads of places. We're going to be pushing the comms out across all, all our uh, radio stations and our newspapers, uh, but also uh, the Liverpool Council website and Liverpool Express website. And uh, I, I, to be honest, I think people will struggle to, to miss it. it we're going to uh, blast this from a comms perspective and, and really, really hope that the city gets behind us on this because this is our chance uh, to shape our destiny and and Liverpool as a city is so great at doing that it always has been so why would we not do it now brilliant stuff Matt thanks for taking the time and hopefully we all get to see you sometime back in Anfield sometime soon cheers thank you